Disclaimer. Trading financial instruments carries risk. This material does not contain investment advice, nor should it be viewed as a personal recommendation, or an offer of, or solicitation to trade in financial instruments. Past performance is not a guide to future results. Hello everyone and welcome to a new ATFX video. My name is Gonzalo Ganete and here just to share with you a new quick update of the market situation. A few minutes ago, we got the last numbers published by the US economy. Um, it was the price on production index. We also got the uh, retail sales and we're going to analyze the impact of those uh, last numbers on the uh, markets. We also going to take a look on the agenda in general terms and let me start just giving you a quick remind of what you can find every single day because I, again, today, as an any other day, I have been um, doing the report and you got on our blog the whole news related with US economy, European economy, Chinese economy, Asia, Japan. You can find absolutely all reference from the last 24 hours, including geopolitical events. And we're going we're gonna to start with... Um, all of these numbers just to analyze what I, what exactly what was the impact of the last event uh, happening a few minutes ago. We got the PPI, the price uh, production price index, which it was 0.6%, about 0.3% expected, and uh, also uh, about the previous results, 0.3% intra-annual, which is monthly. For February, the price on production index was 0.6%, about 0.3%, why this number is important? Well, because this number is one of the uh, inputs uh, composing the equation to estimate PCE, the first and preferred um, inflation um, ratio measured by Federal Reserve. So that means that if these numbers are increasing, eventually, potentially, the PCE, the next inflation rate published uh, and measured by the Federal Reserve, could so as an increase on inflation. It's not actually... Um, is not actually a random result because actually if you take a look on the inflation evolution you can see that has been since june has been almost rising and falling in zigzag since then so therefore we can see that inflation is getting a stock it has been described as a stick inflation because it's not moving from three percent it's rising pro by 3.8 percent 3.7 percent dropping back again to 3.2 percent 3.3 percent and so on and we are in that numbers right now um, and that's why we believe that inflation is still a problem in United States economy. And that is why also United States economy is not up openly taking a decision. Federal Reserve mainly is not taking a clear decision on when cut interest rates, which bring us also to the report, because we have been mentioned here several times on our report that even in the report of Monday, I was also uh, quoting one of the top market analysts in United States suggesting the possibility that maybe interest rate cuts never happens this year which is a shock because if that's the case if after all this this kind of analysts are right and it's in line when when with the suggestion we have been doing in, in our reports from atfx which is the numbers in united states economy are so good unemployment rate is below four percent um growth rate is about three percent and therefore comparing with other economies like europe like united kingdom economy like Jap japanese economy chinese economy Compared with these major big economies, uh, we can say the United States economy is doing well. And if it's doing well, there is no need for cut interest rates so far. Um, and that's one of the main, main uh, arguments or reasons that, uh, for example, members from Federal Reserve like Waller has mentioned in the past few weeks ago, uh, suggesting that there is, no hard to, um, uh, there is no rush to cut interest rates in the United States because the numbers are good. And that's the one of the things. On the screen we got, let me share the whole screen with you. On the screen we got the two years uh, US bond. Um, I'm sharing with you this chart because uh, in my opinion, in my eyes, this is one of the main indicators of why interest rate cuts are moving forward. And means like it's not happening now and it's also getting postponed in time. It means like instead of be happening in March, they, they spoke about, well, they swift to May, from May to June. And even now, June, July, or even August. Anytime the interest rate cuts are not happening and they are moving forward the date for to, to cut the interest rates, the yields of these bonds are rising. So if you see, we mentioned this a week ago, when we mentioned that only if we see the two years bond dropping below 
45, 4.50% yield is when we actually will believe in that interest rate cut. Since then, since they announced this interest rate cut, which it was back in December, boom. Since then, we have seen that the price actually, the yield, the return generated by the bond has been rising. And in February, it was the, ba the big disappointment by the market when they realized that actually it was not happening by March. And since then, we have seen that the market is ha has been discounted that um, a postpones on the data for the interest rate cuts. And therefore, um, this is one of the main indicators you can follow to um, find out when exactly is going to happen. The second indicator is the dollar index, which you got in the screen. As, as you can see, not, either, uh, not only the two years bond, but also the DXY, the dollar index, is rising strongly this morning um, in United States, in Wall Street. Why? Because probably these numbers, the numbers we have seen, at retail, um, um, retail sales, that is actually, it was 0.3% um, against the expectations, 0.6% against the expectation of 0.8%, but still, it was a positive reading because the previous one was minus 1.1%. Therefore, it's good numbers. It's showing us that actually the retail business in the United States is still working. The people got um, actually rent to spend in services, um and goods and therefore uh the inflation is not gonna get colder um summarizing to these numbers also the ppi the producer price index that we mentioned uh, at the beginning of the video is giving us just a uh, pointing in one direction inflation is still a threat and therefore united states economy uh, and federal reserve are not still ready to cut the interest rates or mainly if they want to do so they are considering the risk of um, early interest rate cuts and a new inflation could, could um, appear back. A new uh, inflation could rise back again. And then they, they probably need to modify once again the monetary policies and therefore loss um, um, confidence by the investors if they move in back and forward the interest rates. That's why I believe they are taking their time to take this decision and also even in the previous reports on um, uh, ATFX Connect block, I have been mentioned also the possibility that even Central Bank of Europe will move uh, uh, first uh, this, this, uh, in this direction to interest rate cuts. Actually, we got a few comments this morning done by not uh, one of the... the, the, the yeah, here is. Uh, um, not is the head of uh, Central Bank of uh, Netherlands and he has mentioned I expect the European Central Bank's first rate uh, cut in June. And therefore, again, we need to start to consider the possibility that, first of all, Federal Reserve is not cutting interest rate this year or maybe postpones to, to match the, the interest rate cut. And secondly, the even banks like Central Bank of Europe, Bank of England even, because Bank of England has been um, um, published very good results, macroeconomical results this week, uh, they could take uh, steps in this direction first uh, and before the Bank of England. Not even that, we also mentioned in the report that many analysts are suggesting that maybe a popular Bank of China, which is a central bank of China, could cut interest rates. Uh, following another measure that um, China is taking, let's take a look on the Chinese market too, um, which is Hansen from Hong Kong rising and Sangai Composite. As you can see, both of them are rising, are getting some tracking, um, more power rising back again. Um, but still, as you can see, they are overall in a various pattern, a various market that is dropping. We just not, we just recovering for the last uh, three, four weeks from that movement generated for the last year. So still, it's a long road to uh, to to follow to ride still and. Again, one of the things I was mentioning is the rationale for waiting makes uh, a lot of sense. Reducing rates, because some others are suggesting that China still will not cut interest rate before Federal Reserve and they will actually step back and wait for the Federal Reserve to move first the interest rates because they are risking their uh, exchange rate of yuan against the dollar, which is something we also can take a look. Uh, the situation of uh, dollar and Chinese yuan is uh, not in the best as you can see it's so weak and still let's take a look on long term and you will see that we are actually in one of the worst moments I mean uh, it's technically speaking about 7 even 6.5 which has been a kind of average reference since then 
and we can see that it's quoting above those levels and therefore yuan is getting so weak against the dollar and if they move the interest rates before the dollar move the interest rate they could um how can we say neutralize the effect of that interest rate cuts that's why many analysts also are suggesting the possibility that maybe uh, popular bank of china is, is just um trying to play another cards like fiscal stimulus or a certain kind of uh, flexibility on the bank system instead of cut interest rate first. Uh, so you got all these details here in, the, in our market snacks if you want to take a look and see deeply all reference about this uh, position, this, uh, these options. Um, what else? We can also take a look of how it's going. The index are doing really well. Let's take a look uh, during the season for SP500. We can see that it's correcting the price, but is still super high i mean right now the sp500 mini sp500 futures are quoting uh, um, about 5200 points in, in the case of nasdaq we are still uh quoting about 18,000 points which is a new top record in the case of uh russell 2000 is the only index let me show the full screen to you is the only index that is showing to us certain calm um taking the steps with more more coaches than the sp500 on nasdaq as you can see, the main reference for Russell 2000 will be break out the barrier or the resistance of 2140 points. In that case, yes, we can be optimistic. But so far, what we can see is that the microeconomic, the small and middle caps from United States quoting on the market are taking um, uh, longer to uh, superate or to reach new maximums uh, on, the, on the other side uh, or in contrast with the SP500 and NASDAQ 100. Uh, Nasdaq 40, uh, sorry, Na Nasdaq 100, sorry, and SP 500. We got DAX 40, uh, the, the European market, the main biggest uh, European index, DAX 40 from Germany, uh, quoting about almost in 18,000 points. Let's see what it was the maximum. Maximum was actually 18,000 points, 18,039 points, which means a new top record on the European index, on the German market, and the main one, the reference, Still incredible. This is a miracle. This is the German miracle. Why? Because if you just monitorize the industrial production, the growth rate of uh, German economy is dropping, dropping and dropping. It's getting weaker and weaker. And still the stock market is rising uh, higher and higher. And as, as you can see, we can see that actually, is, uh, in my opinion, this is a dilatation of the price. And we see that sooner or later, a correction is coming. And that correction actually could... Take a look, we, we're coming from October from 14,000 points to 18,000, 4,000 points in four months. It's like a thousand points per month. It's crazy. And there is no uh, retracements, there is no contractions on the waves. It's only certain pauses because this is not even a contraction. This is a pause mainly, a lateral movement on the price. So we need to um, be very cautious with the, um, with the European equity. And in case of oil, we can see that it's rising, but still it's about the $83 per barrel, which is really good results for the oil. Uh, and it's getting approached to $85 uh, per barrel, which I believe is the next natural barrier, natural resistance of this price of the on this market. We also could take a look how it's doing. Um, companies, uh, the main companies that are, are leading the sector of uh, gas and, and, and oil, and it's in $110 per share. And it's something very interesting because weeks ago I mentioned in these reports how interesting it was this uh, stock uh, considering the drop on the oil prices. By 96, 98, I told you it was basically the basis to uh, take long position in this stock. And it was moving forward since then. And, and again, I, it's not advice of any kind. It was just, I was just I was highlighting the um, interesting technical levels there. Um, and it seems to be working really well. After all, I was I was right about this company. Gold is amazing. What is going on? Uh, it's still so high, two thousand hundred sixty-one dollars per ounce. I was waiting to gold uh, get normalized uh, under the twenty, thirty, twenty, fifty dollars per ounce, and I start to channelize on this on this uh, range between the, this range and uh, eighteen fifty dollars per ounce. It didn't happen. It's actually breaking up and keeping so high. Some people believe this is uh, caused by a geopolitical events, um, mainly Asia buying massively gold reserves um, and trust and trustability generated by uh, West countries when they block the Russian assets, uh, make them now uh, many other countries probably prefer to 
hold gold instead of hold financial assets in the West countries. Uh, what else? Uh, Euro dollar moving back again because the dollar is rising. Uh, as you can see, the rise on the dollar is generating a drop on um, Euro dollar and also a drop on cable. That cable has been doing really well. Pound has been doing really well against the dollar for the last few days because of the good results, macroeconomically speaking, in United Kingdom, who finally got a positive growth rate after several periods of negative or flat growth rate, which technically speaking, it was a recession for United Kingdom. And now it seems to be escaped from that recession and um, present or show up uh, for the first time positive results in terms of growth rate. I think that's all. Uh, please, if you like this content and you want to follow more, um, give me a thumb up, uh, subscribe to the channel. And also, if you want to keep in touch or contact me, you can do so by uh, contacting me through this email address to request any particular asset you would like to see or analyze. If you want to participate in any kind of podcast or invite me to any, any of your podcasts to discuss certain topics, we can do so. And yes, guys, one more time, please follow our, publish, um, our publications on our blog because you can get the last 24 hours updates on uh, not only market, but also geopolitical events, international events that are happening around the world on ADFX Connect section of blog market snacks or even through our social networks following ADFX Connect. Take care. Bye bye. Ciao.